Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel and today I have a cool video for you. <clears throat> and uh, this thing is not really new in your eyes. This is the Juin Crane 3S. There's a lot of tutorials on the internet about people uh, balancing it and stuff like that. But uh, a lot of people, they balance using the DSLR cameras and that stuff. So for some of us who use cinema cameras, this thing is a pain. The people who tries to balance this on a red cinema camera, there's so many stuff uh, that they do, which is wrong, and they never really get the balance. And that's what I'm gonna try to be showing you today. And I'm doing this video because one of my students from Zimbabwe bought a Juin Crane 3S from me, and he asked me to show him how to balance this properly. Even though there's so many tutorials already on the internet and YouTube, uh, teaching you how to balance this UN Crane 3. Today there's a cool trick, cool trick. Even if you are using any other gimbal like the Ronin S3, the Ronin S and stuff like that, there's a cool trick on how to balance uh, this three axis gimbal. So this gimbal, it was one of my favorite gimbal that I was using. So during the robbery, they store the gimbal that I was using. So I bought two, one for spare and one for the use. So that when I'm using one, at least one is at home. If I get robbed again, at least I have a backup. Inside this gimbal, when you open it, there's quite a lot of stuff here. Of course, the first thing is the base plate. Second is the extender. This thing, very important. If this thing is not in here, I think the gimbal is going to be very useless to me. I just want to show you how to balance this with a cinema camera. So over here, we have the gimbal itself. The gimbal itself is quite heavy. You can actually tell that uh, this one is made for serious big boys. So this is the gimbal itself when you take it out. And uh, what else am I gonna need in this bag? Uh, we've got uh, a lens support to this side. We've got uh, the charger. Yeah got the base plate so that's what I'm gonna need only I'm gonna put this one aside and then what I'm gonna try to do in this video is uh, <clears throat> the gimbal comes in normal uh, without the extension already so what I'm gonna try to do in this video is to actually show you how to extend this the proper way of extending the arm because if you're using any other camera, like maybe a 5D Mark III, a Sony A7S III, or any of those DSLR camera, I don't really think you're gonna need this because it's an extender for like uh, big cameras. So it makes more clearance for you to balance your camera properly. All right, so that's what we are going to start with. I'm gonna remove these screws over here and uh, add the extender. So let's start from there. All right guys, so I just finished extending the arm and uh, we had a problem with electricity. Officially load shedding has started in South Africa and we were not aware of it. So after the arm extension, there's always this handle that you can attach here. Uh, just to help you have another support of your camera, but doesn't really work a lot for me, for the things that I do. But for some of you who are using a DSLR and maybe you don't want to hold here, you can use this side handle. And one thing that I forgot to tell you is, every time I buy a gadget like this, I always also look for other accessories that work with that gadget. So for this one, I also bought this power bank here. I also bought this power bank, which can power this gimbal, I don't know, maybe for three days. All right. I also bought this uh, transmount zoom and focus motors, which will help me to focus. I don't know if I'm ever gonna use these, but I just bought them. One of you students who have a Juin Crane 3S, maybe you're gonna be giveaway for this. And then the last gadget that I bought is uh, this one, which I think I'm gonna use here and there. This is a transmitter. This is a transmount image transmission transmitter. So you can actually hook it on top of the gimbal and use your smartphone to check the footage, to monitor whatever that you are doing. I think I did a video about this. If that video hasn't 
yet dropped because I did that video before this one. So if it hasn't dropped yet, it means it will drop right after this video. But if it has dropped, the link is in the comment section. All right, so now let's balance our red cinema camera on top of this bad boy here. So side note though, just because this gimbal can carry 6.5 kg, it doesn't really mean that you should port 6.5 because it struggles a little because there's a time that I really rigged the whole camera. I even weighing, I, I weighted it on the scale. It was showing 6.3 and I was like, it is within the range and I put all of it on the gimbal. Actually it balanced, everything was okay, but shooting when you're trying to make some moves, you see the gimbal trying to shake a little. And that is one thing that people who use this gimbal, they make a very big mistake. They think just because it can carry six kg, then they should put the whole six kg there. So what I usually do with my cameras is this. Let me show you. All right, so this is the camera that I normally use. That's why I bought this Juin Crane 3S because it's the only lightweight gimbal that can carry this camera. So as you can see, the camera is not even rigged yet, but it's very heavy. So in front here, I have a matte box, it's lightweight. And uh, on this other side, I have a PD movie that I use for autofocus. Most people who balance these cameras on the Juin Crane 3, they actually really put it the whole lot of it like this. Even myself, I've been using it like that, but I, I started seeing that the gimbal is actually struggling to balance itself. Sometimes when you are doing a short under, it, you'll see that the gimbal is, tries to shake. You, you do everything, you, you increase the motor strength and all those stuff, but because the camera is just too heavy, the gimbal will struggle. So what I usually do is I strip all the other stuff that I don't need. So for example, this side handle, it adds weight, so I will not need this side handle. So I'm gonna just remove the side handle. So when I remove the side handle, the camera becomes a little bit lighter. And then the other thing that is so heavy is this battery. So usually I take out the battery, I'll power the camera via an external battery. So I have a cable that comes straight. So I'll remove the battery. And I'll also remove this battery expander because I'm not going to be needing it. So now the camera feels very light and very small. The way I usually power my camera, it has got uh, a DC in here, which goes to my gimbal. And uh, remember, I'm using the Thanos, uh, a digital photo Thanos. So the power comes from down the gimbal, the stabilizer itself, and I just put a cable here. And then for me to control the settings, because this camera now, you can't control any settings. So for me to control the settings, I bought this Red Pro, uh, Red Mode. It's a remote. So uh, I'll just open it here. Yeah, this is the remote for the camera. So if the gimbal, if the camera is on the gimbal and I want to change settings, I use this. I have put the base plate and I'm going to start balancing the gimbal. Balancing the gimbal, people actually say, hey, it's a lot of time to balance this gimbal, but I usually take I think five minutes and uh, let's try to see if we can do that. Right. So the first thing is the good part with this gimbal is you can lock this axis. So I'll lock this axis here like this. So, and then this one, I'm just going to make sure I put it all the way to the back like this. I'm going to come to it and I'll lock it as well. So now I only have this axis. The table is very small. I just hope my camera is not going to fall for this video. All right, so I'm going to put, let me just put this on the center. Okay, wait, let me balance something here. I want this leg, you see the way the legs are? I want one leg to be at the very back of this base so that at least it cannot topple over. That's a cool trick. You put it there, at least it cannot topple over. So I'm gonna put the camera on the gimbal like so. So I'm gonna balance this axis first. If I put it there, you can see it's balanced. And then I'm gonna lock it. And then I'm gonna lock it. Of course it might still move, then I'm gonna turn it and balance this axis. So the camera is supposed to be straight like this. 
as you can see it's falling so I'm gonna unlock this part here and push the camera in front like this now it's going this side you just have to start moving it slowly slowly until you see that it's balanced okay so this is actually the easiest part you can see now it's starting to balance you can see now it's balanced then i'm gonna lock it so sometimes when you are locking these uh, you have to sort of like lift your camera because it gets hard before it locks so once it moves it might fall down so this axis is balanced and if i go back to this axis i'll just check so it has moved a bit so i'm gonna unlock there and try to balance it as well you just move it a little by a little and you until you see it's not falling anywhere see now it's balanced and i'm gonna lock it so the first axis is balanced and after i balance the first axis i will lock this axis now it is locked then i'm gonna balance the raw axis with this axis over here so i'm gonna unlock it and you see the camera is falling to this side so i'm gonna hold here because the camera is too heavy sometimes these rails are not very smooth so you have to lift it a bit and push that's number one it's still falling this side that's number two balanced so i'm gonna lock it you tighten it once you feel like the screw is hard you lift the camera a little bit and you tighten it even more otherwise you might feel like it's tight but it's not really tight yet so that axis is balanced and i'm gonna lock it just like the first one then we balance the last axis then i'm gonna unlock this axis and then this one people actually say you need to tilt your camera like this then you see where it is trying to fall down then you balance but with me the way i usually do it is i'll lift the gimbal like this fold the arms and make it fall like this so that is like the correct way to balance this axis so you see now like it's falling towards this side then then you know what actually for this thing to work better i'll remove this oops okay for this thing to work better i'll i'll put the extension arm here I'll put the extension arm here. For some of you who wants to use the gimbal in this state, I think having this extension arm also has got a lot of advantages. Then I'm gonna lock the legs here. And then you lift the camera. You can see where it's even falling. You lift the camera, you see it's just gonna wibble. So the way I balance this is uh, by tilting the camera like that. And then I'm just gonna open this part here, uh, move it. And then I'll try to make it fall down. It's going that direction. And then I'm gonna push it a little bit in front. You can see it's falling, but very slow. So it means it still needs to go a little bit in front, like that. You can see now it's not falling. That's how you know that now the gimbal is balanced. So after it's balanced like that, you lock the axis. So sometimes when you balance the first axis, the tilt, when you balance this other axis and you balance the last one, sometimes things move a little. So what I usually do is after the, the last one is balanced, I'll lock it. And then I'll go to the first one and lock it and see if everything is still balanced. I just unlocked it and it's not moving which means it's balanced and then i'll unlock this one as well and see if it's balanced you see the camera is not moving meaning it's balanced when you switch it on for the first time there's a vibration 
that vibration is due to this is the first time i'm ever balancing this gimbal uh, this camera on this gimbal so what i'll do is i'll get in the up and increase the motor strength so that we can stop that vibration all right so i'll get into the app let me do screen or record for you guys so that you can see the app how it works so you have to download the zy play app the one that we saw in the other video so i'm just gonna look for that app zy play app and then i'm gonna open it once i open it i'm gonna look for the gimbal so i'm gonna go to the gimbal sections uh, the gimbal section is here and then i'm gonna look for the crane 3s so i'm gonna tap on this for pro cameras i'm gonna tap that menu and look for juin crane 3s if you're using any other gimbal you can select your gimbal from there but mine is this one over here, the Juin Crane 3S, and I'm gonna click on it. And then I'm gonna say connect now. If it is for the first time connecting, the ZY Play will ask you to allow uh, access here. So you just press allow. And then can you, uh, ZY Play app is allowing you to turn on the Bluetooth. So if your Bluetooth is not on, you turn on your Bluetooth before you even do that, then this screen will not appear. So I'm gonna say allow. The camera is vibrating so hard i'm gonna say only this time and you see it will start searching for nearby devices so i'm gonna wait you can see it has found the device the crane 3s so i'm gonna click on it i'm gonna say connection and then now it is connecting we just have to wait for it a little bit it says device list connected then you say enter now so now after you have entered it this is how the app looks like so after you have entered it you can now go to the settings here on top here and then you go to strength and then you can see the strength here is on the lowest and the camera that we are having here is a big camera that's why it's shaking so now it's vibrating. If I can take it to mid-low, the vibrating stops. If you think like your camera is a little bit heavier, you can even go to medium. Then from here, you are not going to have any vibration. So when you pick your gimbal and start filming, everything moves smoothly. Everything moves smoothly. There's a joystick here which you can control the gimbal. There's what you can tap here, double to reset. You can do quite a lot of things. The camera is not going to shake. Everything is balanced. You can shoot from low angle to high angle. That's one thing that I love. I can still feel like there's a little bit of vibration in the body because the camera is a little bit heavy. So I'm gonna go to motor strength and say medium high. Now the gimbal is as quiet as water. Okay, so now nothing shakes the gimbal is balanced and uh, that is how you actually balance the red camera on this gimbal